When you're getting closer to retirement, there are things you should absolutely stop doing. And the reason I know this is because these are the things my clients stop doing themselves and they report how much better they feel and how much more they are enjoying life. Now let's discuss the first thing you should stop doing. Now I'm not sure if you've ever seen this, but this is a visualization of your life in weeks and each row represents one year of your life. And if you're through age 60, you'll see you're about two thirds of the way through life, assuming you live to 90. And this is powerful because sometimes it's hard to realize that time really is slipping away. And it's not that we need to be sad about it, but we need to be intentional with our time. And that's why my happiest clients know their days are numbered and you know they just they're fearlessly living their lives, spending time on what they want. I'm not saying you need to stop working because you know some of you may really enjoy your work and it's a passion of yours, but if you dread work, maybe it's time to see if you can make that retirement thing happen, even if it won't be as lavish had you worked another several years. Time really is the great equalizer, whether you have a billion dollars like Elon Musk or you're barely scraping by. We all have an expiration date, we just don't know when that day will come. So stop taking your time for granted and stop trading time for money because it's the one thing we can never get back. But even if you stop trading your time for money, you can still have a lot of regret. Now, I first believe I heard this analogy from Ron Blue and it's so powerful. I really believe it can have the ability to change your life too. So I want you to picture this, you're driving home and tragically you're killed in an accident. Now the good news is you had everything set up so that your family and friends knew exactly what to do with your earthly possessions. And as they go through your belongings, they stumble upon your checkbook and they open it up and see the last things you spent your money on before you passed away. So what would they say? Would they recognize what you valued based upon your spending? Often we claim to value certain things, but our spending habits tell a completely different story. And it's this disconnect that can lead to a life filled with regret, even if you have financial freedom. So first you need to be very crystal clear on what you value and what's important in life. But once you've done that, you need to sit down and examine how things might change. I've noticed that my happiest clients stop spending money on things that aren't aligned with their values and they actually increase spending on things that are. But imagine looking back on your life and realizing you missed out on countless memories because you kept telling yourself, I'll do it someday. We often get caught up in the daily grind and the, you know, the never ending list of responsibilities, thinking that there will always be time later to travel, try new things, or you know, spend time with loved ones. But the truth is, as you know, life is unpredictable. And waiting for the perfect time often means those experiences never happen. And you might be financially secure now, but are you truly living? So stop putting experiences off. And that starts with making a conscious effort to prioritize experiences over material possessions. Start by creating a list of, you know, like a bucket list of things you've always wanted to do and start checking them off. Schedule that trip, sign up for that class, or plan that family reunion. You'll find that, in my experience, these experiences enrich your life in ways that material things never can. Life is for living and the memories you create will be the real treasure of your retirement years. But let's take this one step further. Maybe you're feeling like, you know, you're not where you should be financially or you're looking at others with more wealth thinking about all the fun things that they're able to do with their money. But here's the real kicker. You're already a billionaire and you don't know it. I want you to picture this. You get a call from your doctor after a routine checkup and the results are in and they drop a bombshell. So you've got a lifelong incurable chronic condition. And so you're probably hit with a lot of emotions like confusion, denial, and anger, sadness. And suddenly you start asking yourself, why did I take my health for granted? Even though this condition is manageable and, and not necessarily life-threatening, I'm sure you'd give anything, even your life savings, just to have your old health back. But then the doctor calls again with an update and it turns out it was a mistake. You're perfectly fine. For a moment, you know, you're probably walking on air, feeling like you've been given a second chance at life. But just a few days later, you're, you know, you're probably back to the daily grind and that overwhelming sense of gratitude starts to fade. And you're probably taking your health for granted again, even though you would have traded anything for it just a few days before. 
So how the heck does this even happen? As I'm sure you're aware, health is one of those things you don't really notice until it's gone. And there's no number on a screen flashing at you telling you how much it's worth like there is with money. But what if you started thinking of your health as a billion dollar asset? Because honestly, let's just be real, 99% of billionaires dealing with a serious illness would probably hand over their entire fortune just to feel like you do. Again, your health really is priceless. Just because you can't cash it out doesn't mean it's not worth more than anything else you own. And so that's why you've got to stop compromising your health making sure that you're investing in yourself, you know, get those regular checkups and stay active and eat right and you know, making sure you're able to relax. Your health is the foundation for everything else in life, no matter how much money you have. And when you're healthy, you've got a thousand wishes, but when you're not and you're sick, you've only got one. Now we're not done yet and I actually have saved the easiest tip for last. And this one is so simple, you can stop doing it right now and it won't cost you a thing. A lot of people think they need to stay on top of the news to be informed, uh, you know, to know what's going on in the world and to be better prepared for what might come their way. But here's the thing, the news media knows that negativity sells and they exist to get clicks and keep you glued to the screen. And how do they do that? By pushing the most, you know, like outrageous, uh, like doom and gloom headlines that stir up anxiety and fear. I mean, think about it. When's the last time you watched the news and felt genuinely better afterward? You know, the chances are it just made you feel more anxious, uh, more worried and more stressed about things, things that you can't even control. So stop watching the doom and gloom news. It will not help you. In fact, it's probably doing the opposite. It's feeding anxiety and making you feel worse about the world. So instead focus on what you can control, right? Spend time doing something that actually makes you feel good. If you've ever taken a trip where you can completely unplug, no phones, internet, TV, stuff like that, then you know how relaxed you can be when you're not constantly bombarded with negativity. But there is a sixth thing you should stop doing, and the reason I didn't bring it up in this video is because it's such a big deal, it deserves an entirely separate video. You need to stop overpaying in taxes. And if you're in your 60s, and you have most of your money in like a 401k or an IRA, then the IRS is not so patiently waiting to take a good chunk of that money in the form of taxes. Now, the good news is there are things you can do to keep Uncle Sam out of your hair and keep more money in your pocket. And if you want to learn how to stop paying so much in tax, then you'll wanna watch this video right here. Once again, this is Alex Okagawa, partner and financial advisor here at One Degree Advisors. And if you're curious about how our team of certified financial planners can help you in your situation, visit our website at onedegreeadvisors.com.